What's up dirty plant hoes and all you dirty plant enthusiasts out there? I have been out of town for a couple of days and my begonias are looking really, really sad. So I just figured today we would go through and I'll show you kind of how I take care of my bubble begonias, and how I maintain them, and we're just gonna do some maintenance today on some bubble begonias, if that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, so before I get started, I went around and collected some tools. So I've got myself some scissors. I have a moisture meter because I still have a hard time with stuff. I've got my little bottle that helps me to be like really precise with watering. I also have this uh, little eyeshadow brush and I've had a couple of breakouts with like some spider webby type mold on my begonias since we've gone into the winter season. I've had some pretty good success with a couple of things that I've been doing, but I've had some pretty good luck with some techniques that I've done using this eyeshadow brush and also with using some perlite in particular ways. So this first one we're gonna look at today is my Begonia Malachostica. And I can tell that it feels a little bit light when I'm lifting up my bubble. So I'm sure it needs a good watering. Haha! -ha. Before we get started with today's video, be sure and give it a like if you like informational videos like this. And also if you like my sweater, you can find it in the description down below. So this dome is really dirty and I wish that I had the time to clean all these domes off today, but I don't. I just have time to kind of go around and make sure that nothing dies if it hasn't already died. I'm pretty sure I'll have a good case of overwatering and also underwatering to show you. I think I doused one of them way too much. So if I'm looking at this moisture meter here and I'm gonna test it in just a couple of spots, try not to be way too invasive, it shows that it's still relatively moist, so I'm not gonna give this begonia a water. I am gonna spin it around a little bit and just kind of really inspect it, inspect the leaves, make sure we don't have anything with like brown spots, spider webby looking mold. Um, just, you wanna get rid of any expired leaves really when you're growing in such a small contained environment. There's like a little old dead leaf there and I'm gonna get that out of there. My workspace is usually really super dirty because I just worry about cleaning up when I'm done. Other than that, she looks really good. She is such a pretty begonia. I really love this Malachostica. I've propagated it probably the most out of all my terrarium plants, probably because I'm just, I really like it. I'll put the lid back on her. We won't give her a water this time around. She's probably one of the ones that I got to water before I left. Close up her little deal. I keep this one closed. She doesn't seem to mind the extra humidity. It seems like some of these begonias, I'll leave the lid open because it seems like they get moldy really fast if you don't give them a little bit of air. Here's a sad story. This looks like an underwatering issue. I watered this this morning when I got up and I saw what had happened, but it was already far too late. If I lift it out, you can see the leaves right here. They just were not happy with me being out of town that long. It was probably one of the ones that didn't get hit before I left. There was a completely mushy leaf right here. But what I'm gonna do is, because I still have two really good looking leaves right here, some blooms that are about to bloom on two of these bloom stalks and it looks like an expired one right here. So I'm just going to get rid of all of these yucky leaves, clean out the little container and get rid of like some of the uh, spent blooms and stuff like that in there and we'll see. Maybe we can propagate some of these but I doubt it because especially this, especially this old gross yellow one right here because it's definitely seen better days. I try to chop them off as close to the little rhizome as I can because if not the stem will just kind of die back anyways and you don't want to like introduce any mold. I'm gonna cut it off. I just don't want to look at it. Okay, and if you look really close, can you see it right there? If you look really close, you can see a new leaf is coming in right there. So I know it's uh, it's not dying. It just uh, had a rough had a rough go of it because 
I didn't give it a water before I left. I'm gonna pick out all these little spent blooms. None of them actually uh, need seeds, I don't think, because I wasn't in here with a tuning fork. And to be honest with you, it's because I'm still kind of early on in my begonia keeping. I'm not sure which begonias I can breed uh, with which, so. I'm still in the learning process and watching like videos of people who do that sort of thing. I'm actually looking at ordering a couple of books so that I can just learn a little bit more in general. So I've kind of cleaned that up and I have already watered this one. I told you guys I saw it panicking and I watered it this morning. I forgot to cut off this spent bloom stalk. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off for now. But this is a really beautiful begonia. It's never really looked as, I don't think it's ever really performed to its true potential <laughs> here at my house because I'm probably haven't been the best with it, but it's really stunning and I love to look at it. It's really one of my favorites, begonia xanthina. I have some propagations of this um, in my studio room also. I think I got sh showed you guys that in one of my last videos and i kind of just sit the begonias that i've done over to one side because a lot of times they're like right in front of my deals and i have to be able to get to the rest of my rack to water so i'll just kind of get my bubbles out of the way and then start watering the rest of my rack when your begonia bubbles do really good it's hard to get the lids off and then back on because you've got really happy plants in there. So in this bowl, we have Begonia jinxiensis, we have Begonia mountaniformis, and we have Begonia ningmingensis. They don't have any perlite at the bottom of this bowl. It was just kind of put together at the last minute. I just kind of put them all in there, but they've done so well that I don't want to upset anything. I just took them straight from the pots that they were in. I'll take them out. What the hell? If they die, it's going to be all your fault. <laughs> okay, let's look at the begonia mountaniformis because it's obviously the coolest one in here. So it's grown quite a bit since I bought it. I can't remember how many months ago that I got it. It's a really awesome begonia. It's a lot like the Milana Bellata or the Fer the Ferox, if you guys are more familiar with that. Um, this all looks good. I don't see any leaves to take off. There's no dead and decaying matter to kind of get out of here. It feels good. It feels heavy, like it doesn't need water, but I'm gonna check it just in case. Plenty moist. This must be one of the ones that I that I hit before I left. So I'll set this one down. So this is Begonia jinxiensis, and this guy is probably needing to graduate into his own bubble because he is so big. And here is a dead leaf right here. Just gonna toss that. This guy is so big and so beautiful and one of the coolest things about it is the hairiness and usually I say things are hairy but this that's a whole new level of hairy. <laughs> like it is Hairy, hairy, hairy. It's hairy in the Henderson's hairy. You know what I'm saying? This is such a big plant and the pot is so small. I don't know if this one retained any moisture. It feels pretty bone dry and it is pretty bone dry. So I'm actually really glad I took these out. This is Begonia Ningmingensis and it is one of my all time absolute favorite begonias. It's been doing so well that it's actually got little roots coming out the bottom of his little pot there. I always put off repotting these until the absolute last minute because that is when things seem to go wrong and I suggest you wait till the last minute too. I mean, really the last minute because even, even this won't push me into repotting it right away. This also feels pretty dry. We'll give it a shot. Yeah, it's definitely dry. I think the mountain of Formus is going to get moved out of this dome because I don't think I can put them back in. But first, I'm gonna have to water because, oh, also I usually use distilled water to water my begonias, but I'm out right now. And I know that spring water is not the same as distilled water but I went to the grocery store yesterday and I'm not going back. So spring water it is today. And if they all die, I'll tell you it's because I watered them all with spring water. 
but I hope this doesn't go wrong, but I'm sure it'll be fine. It's just one watering out of like a bamillion, so it should be fine. Can you see what I'm doing? I just like angle the little squirt bottle and then I just give it a little shower right down here. I don't overdo it, but I make sure that, because sometimes in these small little pots, the, the soil can get hard. So if you don't like hit it with a squirt bottle, give it like 30 seconds, you know, hit it with the squirt bottle again, give it like a couple more seconds, then you're not gonna really saturate the soil. It's just gonna kinda, it's just gonna kinda go straight through the hard stuff down to the bottom of the plastic pot. But if you kind of um, just squirt it a little bit at a time, it saturates better. That, and you can also put little dishes, like little small dishes under here to bottom water these, or, you can put perlite all on the bottom, which is what I usually do, but I don't know, I guess I just didn't on this round. I'm gonna try to get the Ning Ming Gensis back in this bubble. It's gonna be really hard. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, how is this even gonna come close to working, dude? Oh no. Make some room for your brother. All right, that'll have to do. Now the other one, the Ning Ming Gensis needs water too. I swear to God, I can lose stuff sitting in one spot. There it is. All right, so I take my little squirt bottle and because the Ning Ming Gensis leaves are kind of velvety, uh, to where see how these are kind of like a leathery type of feel, I'm gonna try extra hard to avoid those leaf surfaces because I know that velvet is, the velvet feel is caused by little tiny hairs. And if there's little tiny hairs on the leaves, that means the little tiny hairs are gonna capture water and it's just gonna kind of sit there. And since these bubbles are not ventilated, uh, you know, over time, water just sitting and sitting and sitting will deteriorate the leaves. So on this one in particular, let me get, let me get a hold of you. <sighs> let me see. Shit, this is gonna be so hard. This is gonna be so hard. Oh my God. So right here, I'm gonna go in and water where the leaves are not, just kind of where the rhizome and the stems are. I don't even think I'm getting a good picture. I don't even know if that worked, but I'm trying to show you that I'm not pouring water on the leaves. I'm just pouring the water on the dirt, which is why I'm using this, because if I just went like this and tried to pour it in with the, like a water bottle or a watering can, it'd be a mess. It'd be a real disaster. So I like this for precision purposes. So I'm gonna leave out the Mountain of Formas out of this bubble because Clearly there's no room left here. Oh shit. Then you gotta be, see, and then you gotta be like, how am I gonna get all the freaking leaves back in here, bruh? Oh no. And someone is gonna get smashed unless you're talented like me. <laughs> oh shit, oh god. She said right before she broke her entire plant. You gotta tuck it in. All right, I think that's good. Okay. I also shut this begonia bubble. I don't let any extra air in there. It doesn't seem to need it. I haven't had a mold issue. No reason to leave it ajar. Has not given me a reason to leave it ajar thus far. This is one of the ones that was a, a bad deal with the overwatering. So I overwatered this one because uh, I guess it had been watered already. I didn't have time to check. When I went out of town, I just went ahead and hit it with some water. Big mistake. It was so pretty before this happened. I mean, it was so full and so gorgeous. Begonia Ningming Gensis Variation Bella. And you can see how beautiful the leaves are from that one little leaf. But when it's doing well, it looks a lot better than that. So you can see there's all this like dead, dying, decaying stems right here from being overwatered. So what I'm gonna do is go through here and kind of clean house because you can see there's also like little fresh new leaves right here trying to come in too. See, like there's like a little leaf right here. So it's, she's trying to make a comeback. So I'm gonna make sure she doesn't turn into a moldy mess in the process. And I'm just gonna kind of pick off the, uh, the nasties you know, cause it's all just mush anyways. It will come off if you tug it all the old nasty you know, so I just defunkify it. And you may think to yourself, Rachel, this seems like a lot of work. Yeah, I know. You gotta be a real type of crazy, you know? I think that um, a lot of times people say, I couldn't do all that, uh, I don't have the time. And I, 
I totally agree with you that if it's not something that you're interested in, then you won't, you won't have the time for it, you know? Um, the things that you want to do, you find the time for. This is kind of what I do. This is my thing. This is my one of one of my hobbies. I kind of actually have a couple of hobbies, but I don't mind coming in here and like really being meticulous and kind of going through everything and using eye shadow brushes. It doesn't bother me because I don't mind the process as it were. So I got rid of all that dead and dying debris. I'm not going to water her because obviously that's not her thing. And I'm just gonna, see this one's got some perlite on the bottom and she was sitting just in the perlite and I've got this other dude in a saucer. I'm using the saucer because I have a hard time with this begonia rubro punctata taking up the water. So whenever I water it a lot, like I was telling you before, it just goes straight through and there's no amount of like drizzling that's gonna help this. Um, uh, mountain orchids packed this soil uh, with extremely well draining soil. So I put the dish underneath to make sure that whatever runs off does get drawn back up into this begonia. It's such a strangely weighted begonia like out of its pot that I kind of have to prop it up on the outside. It's also so strangely weighted that it's hard to tell if it's needing to be watered and it's bone dry, but I wouldn't have thought that. They start growing that moss and that moss is cool to the touch. Really, really cool mosses growing on top and you start kind of like tapping that with your finger and you're like, ooh, that feels moist, but it's not moist. It's just the coolness of the moss. So still use a moisture meter. See, I'm gonna just kind of prop it up on this other pot. Got it on a little saucer there so that anything that just drains straight through the pot has an opportunity to bring it back up because it just runs straight out. I can already see it going through the bottom. Begonia rubro punctata. So that's it for that bubble. I was leaving this open because of the overwatering situation. But now that we've gone through another cycle and I haven't watered it, I'm gonna go ahead and close it. Cause I think I've given her enough time to dry out at this point. This is the begonia that I've had and have been struggling with that spider webby type mold that I was telling you about. And it's one of my most beloved begonias. It's the begonia versicolor. Such a gorgeous begonia and what I did last time and I've let it dry out considerably um, probably hasn't been watered in two watering cycles. You can see just how many leaves I had to remove right here because of the like spider webby mold type of situation that it had going on. Most of the affected leaves I had to cut off. I uh, left this one single solitary leaf here. You can see this is a piece of stem here that has fallen off in the deterioration process. I'm just gonna remove that. It almost looks like a if mold was a blanket and they could wrap around your plants, that's what it looks like. It, it, it starts kind of sometimes right here on the soil line, then it travels up the hairy stems. It coats the underneath of the leaves. It can coat the top of the leaves right here. And when I first noticed that this Versicolor had the like mold, the wandering mold, I don't even know the, the correct term for it, but I re promptly removed all of the leaves that were affected by it. Some of the leaves weren't all the way affected by it, but they were just kind of, they weren't deteriorated, but they were just kind of covered in a slight bit of it. So I just took my little um, brush. I just kind of lifted up this debris like I just kind of gently worked my way through the leaf and just kind of lifted up this weird moldy substance. If there was any kind of leaf degradation caused by the mold, I just kind of removed the leaf altogether. Thank goodness I caught it before it reached the whole plant because it was really just at the moss level and a few of the smaller leaves down below. It hadn't actually reached the entire versicolor. If it had reached the entire plant, I probably would have been in a lot more trouble. But this time around, I'm just inspecting it really closely because it was really making webs up underneath the leaves. 
I've got a really good light in here and I'm not seeing any of that like sheeted mold. I also let it dry out like extensively. So it is super dry, which is okay for a Versacolor because I've noticed that the Versacolors really don't need to be watered a ton. They actually don't appreciate being overwatered. I'm just gonna give it like a little teeny bit of water today on the top of the spag here. Just a little drizzle uh, and don't overdo it. That's the end of that. Now that it's been through, and I'll watch it really closely and make sure that if that, if that mold migrates that I cut off anything that's compromised also if you remember we talked about on begonias always getting an insurance leaf i have a, an insurance leaf going right now of the versicolor and uh, it's in a spag and in a tote and i'm hoping that it all works out well and if it starts taking a downturn i'll take even another cutting so hopefully I don't lose the whole thing. Right next door in the same cloche is the Malachostica that I propagated a while ago. It's gotten really big. It's even got like a little blue. It got like a little blue. Really, really, really beautiful begonia, but I told you that earlier and that's why I have multiples. And really, really, really big roots growing out there, but I do not have time today. So it is just going to have to wait another day, but it is dry. So I'm definitely going to water it. I know it's dry because it will barely stand up. <laughs> That's a good indicator. Your plant is dry as well. Now that my Versicolor has kind of um, been through its first checkup without testing positive for any of the mold, I think it's going to be safe enough to put my Begonia Mountainiformis in there to kind of join the party. Nobody's tested positive for anything crazy. And there is a ton more room in this begonia bubble than there was in the last one. I really need to go get my perlite, but I don't want to get up because my legs are numb now. The end on that one. To keep it open or to keep it closed, what am I gonna do on this one? Since I've had a problem in the past with the mold issue, I'm gonna leave it open, I'm gonna leave it half open. And I'll be sure to leave this one closer out to where I can check it every day and make sure that the Versicolor is doing okay. It doesn't take nothing to kind of just really quickly inspect and see what's going on in there. So these next two, I'm definitely not gonna be able to get this guy back in here. Oh, maybe I will. Maybe there's hope after all. This is the Begonia Coriacea crossed with Raja that I picked up from Steve's Leaves. And this thing has been growing like a beast. Oh my God, I haven't picked it up out of here in a really long time. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> I think it likes it in here. Wow, man. What a trip. I guess that's why Cody's always insisting on putting perlite down in the bottom. This begonia is a lot like if uh, Red Hots was a plant, that's what <laughs> this begonia would be. It is flaming. It is straight out of the pits of hell. It's really cool. The leaves are frilly and so beautiful and cute and the blooms are just as red as everything else is. So it's such a beautiful begonia. And I thought this one lived by itself, but I forgot. I'm also guessing that this probably needs water, but I'm probably gonna, let me test it real quick. It's dry. Stowaway mate here, begonia chloristicta red form, little baby, which I don't get these to work very often. They are very, very difficult to propagate, so I don't get very many of them to work out, but this little guy finally made it out of all of his little, his little friends. So I keep him in here with this super happy Begonia Coriaceae crossed with Raja because they just, they get along really well. And if I have any more little babies, I might put them in this terrarium in particular. It's a lucky terrarium now. It's gonna be next to impossible to get this stackum thing back on without freaking crushing everything. I just need like a whole room as a terrarium. You remember Biodome? What's his name, Polly Shore? Can I just get like a 
rainforest room where there's just all humidity high and jungle plants everywhere. Is that too much to ask? Here we go. I'm like mushing them and then they're not standing upright. It's a travesty. Anyways, closed. I have two more bubbles left. I'm sorry if this is a really long video, but I figured it would just be easier to kind of show you guys how I take care of begonia bubbles instead of trying to tell you because it's just easier to learn that way. This is one of my all time favorite begonias and I have not propagated it yet, but I do not know why I haven't. I think I've just had a lot going on with the holiday. And this one right here, Plantastica, sent to me. Real cutie. I think it's Begonia rancifolia. Rancifolia. And this right here is Little Begonia Penny Lane. Such a cutie, oh my God. So I stuck them in here, but they definitely need to be watered. This is Begonia Chingy Pingyi. Such an amazing freaking begonia, you guys. The bottom of it feels like the soft part of Velcro with like almost like red hair, like orangutan, orangutan hair. And then the top of it is completely like patent leather. And when I say completely, I mean, this thing's got plastic sheen to it. Let me get you close up. Me. Check out the plastic. Does that not look like it's come out of a factory or something? Like, ooh, these are my plastic fake begonia. No, no ma'am. And you can see down here, this little struggling leaf. I'm just, and I'm just going to trim that right off because I don't want like any dead or decaying plant matter in there in my little dome environments. You can see the new leaf that's coming out right there. So cool looking. And here is a new leaf coming out over here. Like fresh patent leather. I figure he's doing good. He's also extremely dry. So for sure he's getting watered and I'm gonna water him much in the same way, like, like a little bit of drizzle, you know? That dirt ball be hard as a rock and super dry. Just pray I don't pour water on my crotch. But we're just gonna give her a little drizzle. Wait a few seconds, let it give it some time to turn from like a rock into a somewhat muddy, somewhat muddy surface and then just kind of hit it a couple more times. Also, whatever drains out of this tiny little pot will go into the perlite and the perlite will hold moisture. So that's why you see those roots walling out and going off into the perlite is because a lot of the airy moisture is kept down there. Probably won't have to tend to this bubble as much in the future because I've got this big plastic soil pot and it will retain moisture inside this whole bubble more than uh, the other bubbles that just have like three little teeny pots in it. Cause it's like a big sponge full of moisture and it's just gonna keep this area moist more moist than some of the other bubbles. And I'm gonna shut it. I have any problems with mold with this begonia. So I'd say the higher the humidity, the better, unless you start getting mold, in which case you need to start thinking about ventilating and you also need to think about, do you need the super high humidity, but also a fan to kind of move the air around so it doesn't sit and get stagnant? Or does it just not like being in that much humidity? Sometimes I've had begonias that I thought needed a bubble didn't need a bubble. Took them out of the bubble. They were much happier and much better off. Okay, so my last begonia bubble for my bedroom is this one. Begonia stoutii crossed with microsperma. And I can't even pull that tag out because it is so stuck in there. And it is desperate for a drink. You can see like some spotting on this leaf here. So I'm probably gonna get rid of that one. Not because I'm really super worried about it or anything, but better safe than sorry. And especially if I've got all these leaves to kind of spare, I don't really worry about something like that. You can see this one got kind of frankly 
when it came out of the oven there. It's hairy. They look like little flying saucers, very familiar to like the Pylea that everybody liked for so long, but this one is really cute and it also has a hard time bringing up water. So I've got it sat on like a little deal. The Begonia Arachnoidea and the leaves have kind of decided to kind of just lay down in this range, but you can see it's putting off a new leaf right here and then a new little baby leaf right there. I mean, wow, man. So beautiful. Oh my gosh, such a gorgeous plant. So I'm just gonna kind of gently place that guy back in there. All those leaves are looking good. Nothing looks crispy or dry or mushy or gross. So I'm just gonna leave that one alone. It is dry. I can tell it weighs next to nothing when I pull it out. This right here is the Begonia Luz Hyensis. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, so pretty. I freaking love this little tie-dye 70s moment type begonia here, this Luz Hyensis. I got a little old dead leaf. Gonna get rid of that. We don't want that in there. Just kind of like look it over, inspect it. So I'm just gonna sit it back in because it checks out good. It looks great. Then I'm gonna water these two dudes and then I'm gonna put in the other dude. And that is all of my bedroom bubbles. If you guys have any questions, be sure and leave them down in the comments below. I will try to the best of my ability to answer your begonia bubble questions. But sometimes with plants, it's like you don't know why they thrive and why they die. And sometimes just keeping a lot of plants is the only way you can really get across that learning curve. So, but anyways, I'll try to help you if I can in the comments. I hope this video makes you guys a little bit more brave to try out some of the terrarium begonias because they're not that difficult. They need less water than your average house plant because the moisture is kind of self-contained and they don't always have to be super expensive. There's lots of very affordable uh, bubble begonias that you can get out there that are absolutely stunning and you should you should try it give it a try you can raise a terrarium begonia i believe in you also real real fast i have a third channel it's in the description i think if you check if you click the link you can subscribe and then maybe we'll talk about some other stuff like nails and stuff okay bye And now I would like to give a big, huge shout out to all of my monthly supporters, my dirty plant enthusiasts, Abby Gilbert, Ace Cadet, Alexandra Chilton, Alexis Solly, Always Propagating, Amber V, Amy Adwan, Amy Powell, Andrea Drews, Anna Dreesen, Annika Berman, April Steer, Ashley Caraveo, A Warm Wind, Barbara Lindberg, Bryn, Carl Jr., Carly Grinnell, Casey Dillon, Cass with Plants, Camomile Camille, Charlotta R, Chris Felice, Chrissy Spencer, Colleen Hatton, Courtney Courtney Martin, Crazy Plant Lady, Danielle, Daniel Holt, Darren Hebble, Daryl Lee, David Sawyer, Diana Anderson, Eliza Haney, Elizabeth Gracieful, Ellen Louise Pasco, Emma Castle, Evie, Felicia Yeager, Fenner Lamb, Fiona, Goncalo Martins, Gretchen Ward, Haley Hetrick, Haley Martin, Haley Kester, Heather Summers, Heidi Christofferson, Hells Bells, Holy Coley, House Planty Goodness, Isabella H., Jamie Ellis, Jake Rowe, Jasmine Renee, Jaya Rowe, Jedi KCC, Jenna Maria, Jennifer Banner, Jessica Viola, Jessica D, Joe Howard, John Alexander, Joseph L. Simmons V, Caitlin Card, Cassandra Hines, Caitlin Harvey, Kathy Walters, Kathy W, Kaylee Logan, Keith Betchel, Kelly Hodgson, Kim Toby, Kimberly Mossman, Not Dude, Christy Bim, Crystal Wang, Kaya Hauser, Lauren Loves Leaves, Life's a Garden, Light Owl, Lillian Morin, Lily Rose, Lynn Therese, Lisa Nolan, Liz B, Lori Davidson Hughes, Lulu's Leaves, Mara Baker, Bear Mar, Megan Moyna, Medusa Smith, Meeks, Megan Lilly, Mev H, MF Webb, Mia Sue, Michael Hart, Michelle A, Michelle Reed, Michelle Waters, Monica Allison, Morgan Cluck, Mortessa, My Clean Leaves, Nadine Guzman, Nesta Humphreys, Nicholas Constant, Nicole Rohrer, Nikki Toller, Peanuts Plants, Rachel Sharp, Braylene Hillhouse, Ricky Mulbeck, Reese's Roots, Robin, Safia Bahadir, Samantha Duperity, Sarah, Seth Miller, Shell 91, Showers ASMR, Sophia Rogers, Sophie Bodding, Steph Miller, Steph W, Stephanie Bazella, Stephanie Pietro, Tanya Houtsager, Taylor Kaysen, P, 
The Zen Den, Tiffany Wright, Tug the Toss, Turquoise Fibers and Foliage, Tyler Percy, Verdigree Dreams, Vernie Zhu, Victoria Fonseca, and Wesley Lamentino. And now a big dirty nest of shout out to all of my dirty plant hoes. Best of the best of the best, sir. With honor, Danny Ryan, Seven Puggies, Cindy C, Alana Treese, Allie Wells, Allison Havens, Amber Mae Fleming, Amber Beth, Amy Walton, Amy Baxter, Amy Hatch, Andrew Wolf, Andrea Hewitt, Anna D, April Robinson, Arlisa B, Ashley Williams, Aubrey Puff, Autumn, Botanical Bex, Botanicaz, LLC, C. Woe, Caitlin Phillips, Celia Stuffin Things, Chelsea Clifton, Cheyenne Burnett, Christy Stewart, Sierra Jones, Colin F, Danny Sprague, Deanne Santos, Carolyn Music, Denise Tomer, Diana Warner, Donna Ratcliffe, Eliza Beast Co., Emily Cephalu, Emily Forhey, Emma Wiley, Florence Ramirez, Gab, Gina the Great, Gingerly Life, Haley Evelyn, Haley Stanley, Heather Lamb, Heather Worrell, Honeybird, Houseplant Heather, Houseplants and Hip Hop, Linda Rayha, Jennifer Rouse, Jenny Vanderbilt, Jessica F., Jessica Stanford, Jill C., Jordan Delaney, Juan Z. C., Justin Hartley, Caitlin Guavi, Karen Longstreth, Carissa, oh, Carla Diaz, Catherine Sproles, Katie, Katrin, Kelly Rice, Kelly Costello, Kiri Kelly, Christy D, Lauren SJI, Lyra Juno, Lindsay Daniel, Maggie Quarter, Mary Boots, Mark Straw, Megan Earls, Megan Gowdy, Melissa Hartog, Mel's Planty Plants, Michaela Rags, Michelle G, Miss Angle Green, My Soil Planties, Natural State Ashley, Nicholas Caruso, Nicole McCaw, Nikki Grilly, Auto Avocado Tree, Olivia Wise, Paul Zhang, Pete B, Phoebe DeBover, Plant Princess, Plantastica, Simonetta, QR, Reagan Cornelius, Real Estate Tolta, Rhiannon C, Rianne Chuka Sang, Rico 9 383, Riley Elizabeth, Wren, Root and Leaf, Sammy Joe Ruby, Sarah G, Sarah J, Sarah Jones, Sasha Rujo, Spotted Oreo 10, Stacey Anderson, Tara Peterson, Terrace Plants, Tropics in the Midwest, The Fiber Circus, The Hatter's Madness, The Plant Channel, The Plants Meow, The Turtle, Tracy Buzzle, Tyler Frakes, Victoria Feltenberger, Whitney Eaton, Wicked Witch Roxy, Will H, and Winter Rose. I hope that you guys all had a magnificent holiday weekend and we will catch you on the flip side. Peace out. Later, Tater. Bye.